Okay, welcome to the uh, arthropods, first video on arthropods. And let's get some motion going on here. Uh, here's the, uh, here are the learning objectives. Describe the characteristics of the subfamily crustacea. List and describe dominant crustacean classes and orders. Describe feeding, reproduction, and behavior of local crustaceans. And um, if you go on to Moodle, on to the uh, study guide, you'll see exactly which crustacean classes and orders you'll be responsible for. Because we will be talking about a few others, but they're really more just so you have a, um, a view of what the uh, classes and orders look like and how they all fit into the arthropod body plan. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to a little slideshow of what arthropods uh, look like, what are the sort of animals uh, we're talking about when we're talking about arthropods. So for, straight off the bat, we've got insects like this dragonfly, and the weta. These are some um, lovely little head lice. And here's a larval um, tequila worm. Here is something that you might be forgiven for thinking was an annelid worm, except uh, you can see these jointed appendages on this um, uh, centipede. And here's a millipede. Here is a spider, which is an arachnid, and it's a chelicerite. And here's another chelicerata, which is um, a sea-going uh, sea spider. It's kind of a, uh, these things are called horseshoe crabs. There is a little pycnogonid, a uh, very small spider, and very interesting, very small sea spider. And you can see these big jaws of this thing, so it's quite a predator. But it has, like, almost no body shape. And um, supposedly quite common in certain parts of New Zealand, although I haven't seen too many of these um, in New Zealand. Uh, but... Uh, they were very, very common in North Carolina. Now here's a little, here's a bigger one. This is another Pycnogonid sea spider. This one comes from the Antarctic. Here's a cute little crab. There's a, a little less cute crab. Here is a copiapod. Okay. And a mantis shrimp. A, a hermit crab. Barnacles. Well, these look a little different than everything else we've seen, but as we go through this uh, video series, you'll be able to um, see how the barnacle's body plan uh, very much um, is similar to the body plan of a crayfish or a, or a hermit crab or an isopod like this. And uh, this one's uh, parasitizing this cowfish. And um, you'll be able to uh, see how those barnacles, um, what features they share in common. Okay, here is a um, freshwater crayfish. Here's a one of the ones that we like to chase around a little bit, uh, commonly caught in New Zealand. This is the red uh, crayfish, Jesus said Wadsey. And here's the, the North American lobster. Um, so the smaller, a smaller one, and then these things uh, obviously get huge when they get a little bit bigger. When they get older, so that one might be 50, 60 years plus old, but uh, claws so big that you, it's amazing that they can lift them. And here is another um, instance of gigantism, which is a very deep water spider crab. Amazing giant claws. Okay. So class, all of these animals, although very, very diverse, have the same, uh, roughly the same body plan. And let's have a look at that. Um, the arthropods. Okay, they all. The term arthropoda is from jointed foot. Okay, right, so um, we'll see this arthro being the root for jointed, and poda for foot. Okay, so these of the animal species are the most diverse animal species of, uh, or not species, the most, the most diverse phylum of any animal species. So nearly a million of them, and most, uh, nearly a million species known, um, most of them are, uh, as, are insects, 
and um, they're all characterized by a these two characteristics. These arthropods all have chitinous exoskeletons and jointed appendages. So the exoskeletons have become uh, harder, and the appendages have become jointed. So the exoskeleton is used on armor. It um, limits the growth and has to be molted seasonally. And so these things crawl out of the uh, their skins every once in a while because the skins are inflexible and don't grow. And they have uh, much bigger brains than the annelids that we looked at in the last series. And mostly dioecious, so mostly sexually distinct okay, as adults. So um, it's thought that... Um, Arthropods are derived from annelids, and if we look at a um, uh, the vid- the um, sorry the uh, diagram of this annelid worm, a generalized annelid worm, and then we compare it to this uh, the body of this crayfish or this lobster, we can see very easily how with a few modifications and uh, millions and millions of years of um, tinkering and small incremental steps, then um, the evolution of annelids to arthropods uh, is very simple. Okay? So the annelids have one set of antennas. Okay? The um, uh, the crust... Well, 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 I'll talk about antennas in a moment. But let's start with the most basic feature of annelids. We've got uh, segmentation. So we see all this segmentation. And whereas the annelid segments are very similar to each other, one, two, three, four, five, these all um, are their uniform um, segments, the segments are still present in the arthropods. But if you look, they've um, become more specialized. So we have a specialization of the segments. And just like the specialization of the digestive tract, then this allows more efficiency in each of these segments to do a particular job very well. And um, again, and with the efficiency and specialization of the segments, also comes the, effic- the efficiency and specialization of the legs or the appendages. And um, so we go from this very simple parapodia with the setae at the end. The setae are still there. You get these, still get these little bristly hairs around the edges of these um, uh, these legs, if you will, these um, appendages. And but they have become jointed now and more specialized. So we've got. The ones that here we've got these ones on this crayfish. These ones will have uh, evolved and adapted for um, propelling the organism here. These ones are the ones that will go underneath the abdomen, and these are the ones for egg holding and swimming. Okay, and then you have walking legs, ones with little pinchers, and then mandibles for manipulating food, and then the antennas. And all so all of those appendages are specialized for their particular jobs. Okay, so it's you can see quite easily how these things have um, uh, graduated from this design to this design. Uh, and so this is as we go through the course and move up through the evolutionary complexity, uh, um, or move up in terms of complexity and, and generally following the evolutionary pathway, then. Hopefully that illustrates that transition. Okay. All right, so within the arthropods, um, we've got three subphylum that you need to be aware of. Okay, the first one is Chelicerata. So these are sea spiders. Okay. Um, Then we've got uh, sea spiders, uh, horseshoe crabs and spiders, and uh, they have no antenna two sec- sections of the body. You've got the um, the head and the abdomen. So it would be uh, a, fused, uh, a fusing of the cephalus and the thorax, which would be a cephalothorax 
and an abdomen. So they've got two sections to their body, no antenna. And the subphylum hexapoda, so hexapoda are insects, hex meaning uh, six, six legs, okay? And so these are insects, and um, but very rare in the water. They're mo mostly terrestrial. Okay. Um, well, yeah, actually, not rare in marine environments, but um, mostly terrestrial in freshwater. Actually, you can get lots and lots of uh, insect nymphs and the like, um, as a tr any trout fisherman will will know in freshwater. Okay, and um, subphylum crustacea. So these are the ones that we're going to be mostly focusing on because they are the ones that are mostly found in the marine environment. So uh, the hexapods have uh, one um, pair of antenna, three body sections. They've got the head, thorax, and abdomen, or cephalus, thorax, and abdomen, and six legs. And the crustaceans have two pairs of antenna, and they have a hugely var varying number of legs. Okay, so let's uh, talk about subphylum crustacea. These are the, and we'll talk about the um, uh, the general characteristics of sub of crustaceans. Um, mostly marine, and you can think of a freshwater species. We've already seen one, um, and that was the uh, uh, freshwater crayfish. Two pairs of antennas, so, and this is one of the diagnostic features of crustacea. All crustaceans have two pairs of antennas, and then their body plan is modified in lots and lots of ways based on what life, um, what habitats they, uh, they, they live in and what food they feed on. Okay, so they all are usually um, sexually dimorphic, which means it's the same thing as dioecious. And they have um, all this type of larva called a nauplius larva. And here's a generalized nauplius larva. Okay, with uh, and here is a nice picture of one uh, uh, through a dissecting microscope. You can see the antenna and a second pair of antenna, and then some uh, jointed appendages. These things will have exoskeletons and. Here we go, here's a micrograph, electron micrograph of these. And you can have a freeze on these and have a closer look if you like. Alright, so within the crustaceans, you're gonna we're gonna need to know two classes. Okay, there are five, but we're gonna deal with two of these. And most because essentially most of what you're gonna see, most everything that you're gonna see um, when you're diving and when you're uh, looking around in the in the near shore environments will be uh, either of these two classes. Okay. So the first one is Malacostrica. All right. This is crabs, crayfish, isopods, amphipods, most everything that you are going to think of as um, uh, larger arthropods, or sorry, larger crustaceans, and most of the stuff that you're going to see swimming around. And then we have uh, maxillopods, or maxillopoda, and these are usually quite small, and they include the barnacles and copiapods. So these ones, these ones are, um, let's see, oh, sorry, these ones are very small, and uh, the copiapods, they're almost invisible to the naked eye. Some of them are invisible to the naked eye. And the barnacles, which uh, are look uh, very different, but uh, have the same general body plan as other crustaceans. All right, so look, let's look at the malacostrican generalized body plan. Actually, we'll move that into the. We'll do that in the next video.